And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, my name is Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Archaeology, The New Expedition. This is a game by Phil Walker Harding. Now, this game originally was produced by his own small company from Australia. It came in a small box. I remember thinking, huh, what is this? I played it, and I said, wow, this is a simple, really fun, light card game. I was really excited when I found out that it was being reprinted by Z-Man Games, although this is the second time that it's been reprinted by them. But this time they overhauled the game. They added a few minor rule changes, but a very nice graphical look to it. So you already know I like the game. Let's see how cool this new edition is. Here's how the game plays. thing you'll do is you're going to pick a monument. You shuffle these and draw one of these monuments that you're going to be exploring. So let's say we draw the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid has three chambers in it and each of those chambers you're going to be placing some cards. You'll be drawing from this deck of treasure cards. So maybe I'll put two there and then we put five here. That's what it tells us to do here. And then the next one has eight cards. So those are placed there. Treasure cards are also dealt to each player. And then, so each player is going to have four of these cards. You're also going to be putting a market in the middle of the table. So five cards are going to be face up in the middle of the table. This is going to be the market that players are going to be able to go to over the course of the game. Then into the deck, you're going to shuffle some thief cards, some sandstorm cards, and six map cards. Now the sandstorm and thief cards, it helpfully tells you on the bottom how many of those to put in a deck based on the number of players. So if there's four players, I'd put eight thief cards and I would put four sandstorm cards. These decks, these cards are shuffled together in one big deck. On a player's turn, they will draw the top card into their hand. If it's a treasure card, they simply add it to their hand. If it's a thief card, they'll discard the card, although they'll discard it face up in front of everybody. That way everyone can quickly look to see how many thief cards have been shown and they'll steal a card at random from another player's hand. Or if they get a sandstorm, everybody has to lose half the cards in their hand, round it down. So if you have five cards, you only lose two cards. Any cards that are lost are added face up to the market here in the middle of the table. And then, you, and then if you drew a sandstorm card, you get to draw another card. Now each player has a tent card. These are one, you start with one tent at the beginning of the game and you can ignore one sandstorm per game. You just discard the tent and ignore a sandstorm. After you draw your card and do whatever happens with that, then players can play basically as many actions as they want until they're done. Now usually you're not going to have a whole lot of actions. One of those is simply going to the market. So if I go to the market, I can trade a card from my hand in. So let's say I have this mask card in my hand. This card has a value of four on it. So I can put that in here, and then I can take cards up to four into my hand. So yeah, I'm taking all these cards, ha ha ha. Or I could do the, you know, something very similar. I, I might want that mask card. So I get rid of a three and a one card, put these in the middle and take the mask card into my hand. Another thing that you can do is you can sell a treasure. When you sell a treasure, you're going to pick one or more cards in your hand and place them in front of you. Now, the more cards you have of a type, the more it's going to be worth. So I might have three pot, or pot shards, so I'm going to place them down in front of me. And you'll see here on this card here, this pot shard, there are, first of all, you'll notice there's 16 of them in the deck. They have a value of one when you use them in the market. If I play three of them in front of me, it's worth three points. Well, that doesn't really seem worth it at all. I probably wouldn't play it cards in front of me unless I had five of them in which case you can see they're worth 15 points. Once you play them in front of you, you cannot add to them, so you have to decide the best time to play uh, these treasures in front of you. There are eight different treasure cards in the game, although you use a couple less treasures if you're playing with less than five players. And you can see they have different varying amounts. Like, there's only four Pharaoh masks in the game. If you get all four of them, though, and play them in front of you, that's 50 points. One of them's worth four, but two are 15. Cups with value of two, one is one, Two of them are 12, that's great. There's only six of those. While coins, 
2, 6, 12, 20, 30. So you can see they all have different numbers and different variations of how you can play them. Remember, once you play them in front of you, you could start another set. For example, if I put out three pot shards, I could start another set of pot shards, but you can never add to a set that you've already put out. As I mentioned, there's also map cards. Map cards have a value of three in the marketplace, and you can put one of them in front of you for three, but you're usually going to want to use them on your turn as one of your actions to go to the monument. Here, for example, I can discard a map card, and it's removed from the game, to take this pile of two treasure cards and add them to my hand. Or I might wait till I get two map cards and take the pile of five, or three map cards and take the pile of eight. Each of these monument cards is going to be somewhat different depending on the game. So for example here, you'll start with a pile of 12, and every time, and then you're gonna have three treasure cards, three piles of treasure cards. So one, one, and one, and then another pile of 12. And every time a sandstorm comes, you're going to add a pile, a card to each pile. And you can discard a treasure to take all the cards in one pile. The Sphinx and the Mine are uh, both kind of push your luck aspects where you basically will start flipping cards. This one, as long as you, your value doesn't go over five, you can keep them all. This one, you name two cards and flip over five, and you get to keep all the cards that you've named of that type. The tomb starts with just two chambers, but you can look in those chambers and keep two cards for one map. And this one has three chambers that have five cards each, and two maps will let you go into it. And any time you sell to the museum, when you put out the treasures in front of you, you can peek at one of these piles. This will continue, the game continues, until everyone has basically, the deck has run out, everyone has done all the buying and selling that they can do at the market, and then play the cards in front of them. You simply then add the points on the cards that you've put in front of you, sold to the museum, and whoever has the most is the winner of the game. For those keeping track, the rules changes from the original version to this are the tent cards, which is great because it lets you avoid that one sandstorm. Although, probably in a game you'll play, you'll avoid a sandstorm. Ha ha ha, the next card's a sandstorm. Hilarious when that happens. Uh, but anyhow, um, also the biggest change is the change of the monuments. Adding those different monuments. The pyramid one, the first one that I showed you, was the only way to do it in the original game. This gives it some variety, and I like that. I believe, I haven't compared this in the old game numbers, but I believe there's a, either a minor change in a treasure or they added an extra treasure. I know they added enough for five players. The original game did not go up to five players. So the rule, everything has been changed. And the coolest thing is just how well the game looks. There's a lot of numbers on the cards, but they're simple, easy to see. It looks really good. The back of it kind of evokes that some uh, card game that they played in ancient Egypt. The whole thing has an archeological theme to what is essentially a fairly abstract game, and that's fantastic. This is one of the best, what I call, filler games there is. It plays quickly, it has a bit of push your luck, there's a little bit of interactiveness where you steal a card from someone else, which sounds brutal, but it's part of the game. Because you can play cards out anytime you want. Four Pharaoh's Masks gives you 50 points. If I buy a Pharaoh's Mask from a market, everyone knows I have that. So if they get a Thief card, who do you think they're gonna steal from? Even if they're not collecting the Pharaoh's Masks themselves, that's worth four in the market. It's fantastic. So you have to be very cautious what you do. And you might say, oh, I got two Pharaoh's masks. And, oh, man, you know, I don't want to play them for the points. But that's some points, and that's better than no points. You could try to collect just the pot shards and the small stuff and cut sets. Um, and that's fine. But if someone does get one of those big sets, they can catch you in points very easily. The different uh, monuments, like I said, adds a lot of flavor to the game. I like the push your luck ones. I like the game, the maps. You're sitting there going, oh, I got two maps. Should I use them now or should I, should I get a third map and then use it? Or should I just trade the map away? Or should I just sell the map to the museum? Ha ha, in front of everybody. There, there's, a, there's some neat concepts to this game. I love the original game and I love this version. It is a gorgeous production. It is easy for people to get into and play. I can teach the rules very quickly. Everyone understands the concept of the Sandstorm and Thief. They're negative events, but A, you know they're in the deck, you know they're coming, and you can see how many are left. You're like, there's 30 cards left, and there's n one Sandstorm. It's probably not gonna come up now. While, oh, there's still three Sandstorms left, and there's only 10 cards left in the deck? Yeah, we're gonna get Sandstorm. I better sell now. The game ends very easily. Everyone sells all their stuff. It's just a very easy, quick game. I'll sell this, take this, boom, your turn. I'll do this, this, boom, your turn, boom, 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 boom. And I like games that do that. Uh, uh, like I said, with a, a short little card game though that has that strong theme, 
that works in this style, it's just, this is a win-win-win. This is one of those games that you should put in your collection. Even if you like heavier games, this will give you a respite and some pretty cool ideas. And if you love light games, this is one of the best. Highly recommend it. Archaeology, the card game. Dice Tower Judgment, it belongs in my collection! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Hey, shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.